This is Twit. I want to get back to AI because I think that it is inevitable that there will be AI priests. There are already AI, psych AI psychotherapists. What do you think of AI psychotherapy? I mean, you know, if, if you're going to do it for something that is very straightforward and direct, uh, like how Roger, to Rogerian psychotherapy, which is what Eliza was supposed to be, is a Rogerian's, because it just goes, well, tell me more about that. Well, yeah, if you're, if you're just going to ask a question and not actually trying to get anywhere, um, I think that that's fine. And I think that that's very effective. I think that where it can go wrong and when we're dealing with deep seated childhood issues, where even being said one thing in the wrong tone can come off very badly. And tonality with AI is really horrible. The right. um, feeling yeah. of emp empathy, the emphasis where you should place it, all of the things that have to do with a personal relationship similar to the priest, the AI priest missing those pieces can cause a lot of damage. And plus, when you're dealing with this, one bad set of advice, like, it's kind of funny to say, you know, well, you can, you know, dip the baby in Gatorade, but it is, maybe that's not that funny now that I say it. <laughs> no, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, I like it. I it's, like it's cool. it. Uh, um, make sure you bring the baby back out after. Um, <laughs> um, but like say well, you don't one submerge it, do you? <laughs> It well, depends. Some people I mean, do. Some people, it's a Baptist, full bath, Baptist right? Like you're doing submerging. it right in the river. Yeah. Okay. So river the, the parish I worked at when I was in San Jose called Most Holy Trinity, we, it, it wasn't a jacuzzi, but it looked like a jacuzzi. And yes, it was full submersion. It, it was it, full submersion? Yeah. What? Can I ask a question? Just, just neither here nor there. But like, what's up with the outfits? They're kind of see-through. Why is that? Um. <clears> so... <throat> As, as you are brought into the church, the white outfit is supposed to represent purity of coming into a new community. Mm -hmm. But you could wear the underwear, couldn't see you? You could. But the reason why they're see-through is because people are cheap. <laughs> That's just no other reason. <laughs> There's no other reason. Okay. Okay. I'm Because every time I'm like, wait a second here. That is yeah. quite thin linen. I'm just you saying. You don't have to wear a napkin. You can wear <laughs> something sick, thicker, but people don't want to buy those things. So that's why they're see-through. Do they, you, you, they don't give them to you. You have to buy it and then you keep it? No, but uh, okay. by them, I'm, I mean us. The oh, okay. We, okay. Cheap. okay. So the you cheap want a, a diocese that okay. buys heavy Muslim baptismal robes as opposed to the cheap. Or you have to wear linen. a onesie underneath it is my or, thought. No, no, see, actually, we tried that. You also can't do that. Oh, because they sink. The, uh, if, <laughs> no, well, they'll absorb so much water that by the time you get to like the sixth person, there's no water left in the in the font. <laughs> It's all in the clothes as they walk out. It's all so. like a giant sponge. They get out, and the whole sacristy is just soaking wet. It's, it's just soaked, right? Never thought of so that. Sorry. You had asked me a question about the AI. So <laughs> you, maybe you, you want some that's Wait, like what were Teflon we talking about? so yeah, the sorry, water sorry. runs off of it a little bit. Anyway. <clears throat> and then people can catch it. And um, Yeah, so so I think that in a lot of cases, you can use it for very simplistic methods of getting treatment. It's risky, Diagnosis, it's questions. It's a big point. It, it's it's yeah. a huge risk. Is if it yeah. goes wrong, it can go very wrong. And they'll tell you, oh, well, like, how do you assess if someone's actually suicidal? Like, they'll be like, oh, if you say this word, it'll give you the numbers. That is not That's good not enough. It. When no. you're dealing with someone that is in a no. very serious situation, you want to be able to kind of assess by looking at them and seeing and hearing their reaction of, I need to call someone. This is go has gone too far. Yeah. And so those are the issues that you have with things that you kind of need a personal interact. And like you want someone else that like the thing is we dismiss a lot of things that happen from like a computer as they just have to say that. But when you're talking to a person where you have a trust, it's a different interaction and that attachment is a really huge cursor to is it is someone going to get better or they aren't. If you like your therapist and you feel safe, there's a greater chance that you're going to do the things that you have to do and you'll actually get better. Let me propose. You know where AI would actually really work well for therapy? Um, post appointment. So like the, the device that you got that uh, will record mm -hmm. conversations. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you had an AI that could listen into the conversation and then provide you with its own analysis of, of what was happening, 
after the appointment so that you as a therapist could read that and put that into your notes and add it to your next session. That I think actually would be interesting. I'd, I'd love to see something like that. I would love like if that. it took my notes for me, if we're really going to yeah, talk about too. things that could that be too. helpful. But I think also those reminders would be great um, for AI. So journaling mm-hmm. apps, things that remind you to be able to do the things you have. They have ones for OCD to stop you from going through the rituals and repeat um, so that it kind of reminds you don't do this. This is what you should do. Remember your techniques. Because when you're really anxious or nervous, you forget. Like you have all of the things. You're in therapy and it's like, whatever, 50 minutes. You're like, yeah, I'm going to remember everything. Thing and then suddenly you leave and it's like, I don't even remember one of the words that were said. So to have that to be able to remind you to do the homework would be great. And I think that that would help yeah. people get better faster also. I'm going to uh, propose Leo's Law with AI. See if this Ooh. sounds good to you. We're talking a lot about AI and the dangers of AI and, uh, and the threats of AI. Almost universally, I think AI is dangerous when unattended. Like an AI therapist yeah. by itself is dangerous. Um, mm-hmm. AI weapons acting completely autonomously seems like a bad idea. Even an AI artist or an AI musician unattended, that's when you get in trouble. But, but I think we're seeing that AI is valuable, can be useful when used in conjunction with a human with judgment. There's some value to it. Is that is, I, mean, I mean, does that completely and I think how eliminate is the, AI the danger? Being taught? I don't think it eliminates it because it's hard to oversee that much information at a time. Um, but I think that that would be helpful. But also, what is the information being used to teach the AI how to do things? So if they're using just the internet, there are a whole bunch of things that are not actual studies that they could use because they think that right. whatever, they don't know you know, submerging yeah. someone and locking them in a dark room will help them get over their fear of phobia. It will. Right. It will. But they will be traumatized in other ways of trust right. and other right. things to be able to do that. They may not be scared of the dark by the end or they're terrified of it. Um, but so what is what is teaching the AI? A lot of the times that we watch AI that's kind of gone bad, it's because it's using the Internet. And as we all know, the Internet is not always a pretty happy place. Well, I mean... That's the excuse I use for AI hallucinations, which is that the AI is trained on everything. <laughs> just as the internet is everything. And, it, and it, just as in the real world, there's good and bad. Do you really want a human to decide this is good, this is bad, you get trained on this and you get trained, don't get trained on that? And isn't that what we do all the time? Like that's what a school for learning how, like you could say, oh, well, we don't want humans to do this. But humans are already teaching the machines in the first place. Machines can't do it on their own because they would end up figuring out that we're the bad thing and wiping us out. No, no, we no. We have to invest in magnets. <laughs> it becomes very expensive. That's not true. So, Actually, I'll give you a good example. Um, uh, Google developed, Dennis CB developed uh, something called Alpha. Uh, Alpha Go and Alpha Mind and, and Deep Blue was the originator of this, but Alpha. And Alpha taught itself chess in a day, all the human did was give it the rules and said, those are the rules, optimize. That was it. And the and the and the chess playing computer by playing itself billions and billions of games in a in a matter of a day became the best chess playing computer of all time. They did the same thing with AlphaGo. I think that's an example of the human would just get in the way. That the But that's a very well, simple but, but maybe that's too right? simple. Like yeah. there's a set there's a set yeah. of rules. There yeah. aren't many okay. outlier rules to it. Whereas- I just don't want humans to teach the computer what the rules are because humans are flawed. We right? are, but when we deal with something like like therapy, like there there are certain things that actually work and there are certain things that are out there if the computer like it's trial and error to get to being a very good therapist could be a whole bunch of people dying along the way because it was like, oh, well, you might as well, well just. Well, I should point out. Right. That does there, seem really horrible. I get why you would feel that way. Maybe you should just do what you're thinking. Of doing. There are bad therapists, <laughs> right, know. out there. There are bad there are therapists, definitely who, bad therapists who can do that same yeah. damage. They're Absolutely. Quite, you know. And there's, but there's an oversight committee. We have checks and balances for humans. Uh, they're not perfect either. And they're, unfortunately, with therapy, it's kind of this closed system. You don't see how someone is inside a therapy office. Like, I guess, like for me, you could check out my YouTube channel. It's kind of what I'm like in a, not with the outfits, um, in a session. So you can get my personality, but you can't really do that 
usually with therapy, it's a closed system. So that's also an issue, but there's oversight committees. There's people that are looking over it. There's training. The training has already been vetted. Now, again, is does that mean that it's a perfect system? It isn't, but it works so far. And so for a computer to be able to get to that point, who is the fallout to that? You just made a case well, to, for to, to occupational Leo's, licensing, Shoshana. <laughs> Shoshana has... You don't, you don't hate all occupational licensing, right? No, Shoshana? no. The, <laughs> the only thing is that, uh, and I've seen this across professions from uh, physicians to, weirdly enough, cosmetologists, just basically, like, there's more barriers to entry than there are uh, people checking up on people. So, like, a lot of awful lawyers get to say lawyers because they're like, well, mm. we protect our own and, like, whatever. And, like, this isn't that bad. So it's, like, really hard to become debarred. And same for medicine. And um, for cosmetology, a couple of studies have shown that like 30% of not salons, but foot baths within salons. So 30% of those have um, bacteria that they're not legally allowed to have, but health inspections don't happen that often. And when they do, they don't happen very like invasively. So lots of bad salons get to keep operating. No one tells them, hey, make sure this mm -hmm. is actually clean and stuff. So it's funny, um, I have a couple of problems with licensing broadly, not that all of it shouldn't exist, but like, even where it's a good idea, sometimes oversight is done really crappy. But with therapy, I'm not even sure what the right way to do it would be. Like, I, I'm not sure if you can really have people like sit in with a therapist and be like, oh, is this a good therapist or not? Uh, like, I'm not sure if that would even be representative. Um, but it's but it's, there it's, are it's some funny. counter examples. The DSM, which is the diagnostic manual used uh, in uh, certainly in, in uh, uh, hospitals and psycho psychi psychiatry, and I know you're very familiar with the DSM, uh, Georgia. Until very recently, didn't even recognize PTSD. Really? Yeah. Uh, this is actually a, a, a great book, which I'm sure you've read. The Body Keeps the Score, Georgia. Have you read that? Oh, wonderful book. Highly yeah, recommend it. Uh, he, it's, a, it's about PTSD and um, treatments and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he, for a long time, tried to get PTSD into the DSM. And because the DSM, which is the diagnostic manual used universally, but there are also, as with everything, there are some in people with some interests involved mm -hmm. really pushed back on the notion of a number of, of things. For instance, on the, on the notion of, uh, he talks about it in the book, um, uh, child abuse. They thought it was a very, wow. a very, very tiny percentage of uh, children had experienced uh, child abuse. And of course, that's completely wrong. We know that now. So there's somebody, a gatekeeper who is widely trusted, but that could be real damaging. Mm -hmm. I, we haven't proved anything except the humans are as screwed up as AI. Yeah. I don't I don't know what, what the solution is to all of this. Yeah, if you haven't read the, the book, uh, Georgia, wonder, wonderful book, Bessel van der Kolk. He's a, a psychiatrist, um, and it's really about PTSD. It's a very it's about trauma, mm -hmm. and it's a really wonderful uh, book on trauma. I highly recommend it. came out about uh, eight, eight or nine years ago. I do have a lot of hope for AI and medicine, though, because I have a lot of weird stuff, stuff that like nobody mm. even knew existed until five, 10 years ago. Like histamine intolerance sounds fake. Like it sounds like the people who think they have uh, gluten sensitivities and they don't, but they like really want to have gluten sensitivities. But it's uh, it's funny because I was watching an old movie recently and they made a reference to it that I like a hundred years before this had a name. This character was like, oh, uh, I can't have tea. My doctor says I shouldn't have it. Uh, he says it's like poison to some people, but only to some people. And uh, tea is notoriously high in histamine. And like, that's basically the only group of people who really, really can't have tea aside from like caffeine sides of it and stuff. But I thought that that was interesting that there was some understanding of it back then. But uh, doctors have only very recently understood that this exists and the depth of it. Um, I have a lot of, I'm so excited for AI to, to dive in here. I definitely don't think it can be by itself, but I think AI is going to find stuff and correlations and, and possibly then causations that uh, that we haven't figured out yet, even that I haven't figured out yet for my own body. So I'm, I'm pumped for that. I think that's a good example of uh, what I was just talking about, the human machine interface, because we use doctors for two things right now. We use them for diagnosticians, which requires a great memory, almost a perfect memory and a vast knowledge, uh, and maybe is an imperfect tool. But we also use them for treatment and support and a whole bunch of human things. And it, putting them 
why should the doctor be required to have a perfect memory if a machine could be very good at diagnostics, but only when used hand in hand in conjunction with a human, right? That seems to me a perfect combination of AI and human. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.